floor to the distinguished representative of Pakistan. Thank you, Mr. President. Mr. President, the Pakistan delegation aligns itself with the statement which has been made by the distinguished representative of Italy on behalf of the Uniting for Consensus Group. I would also like to express our appreciation to the permanent representative of Qatar for promoting a proposal which could lead us towards a consensus in the assembly on the rollover of the work of the IGN at its 75th session to the next session of the General Assembly. This contribution from Ambassador Altani is further testimony of her superb guidance of the IGN process this year, together with Ambassador Wolnecker of Poland. Mr. President, I would also uh, like to add that we are happy that the amendments proposed by certain delegations have not been pressed to a vote. This would have had disastrous results. Mr. President, I would once again wish to express the Pakistan delegation's deep appreciation to you, Mr. President, for your firm, efficient, transparent, and sagacious leadership of the General Assembly this year, including in the IGN process. You have set a high standard and an outside, outstanding example for the leadership of the General Assembly. As I had stated last Thursday, we regretted some of the interventions which were made then, and we are hopeful that the decision that we will reach by consensus, hopefully, will restore the dignity and sanctity of the work of the General Assembly and the office of the President, which was assailed unfairly and unjustly in those interventions. Mr. President, throughout the IGN's meetings this year, the proceedings have been repeatedly marred by aggressive demands of certain delegations, inflexibly pressed time and time again for acceptance of their unequal and inequitable goals. But as has been demonstrated in the General Assembly today and last week, membership, the membership of the General Assembly does not endorse their sense of entitlement. Our exchanges of the past few days have also reaffirmed that the only way that progress can be made towards agreement on Security Council reform is through consensus. The Council's reform involves the vital security interests of each and every member state. It cannot be steamrolled by bullying tactics and procedural maneuvers. It is precisely due to its significant implications for national interests and the security of member states and the implications for the UN system as, as a whole that the General Assembly adopted by consensus Resolution 5330, which provides that any resolution or decision on the issue of Security Council reform can be adopted only by a two-thirds majority of the entire membership of the General Assembly. Procedural maneuvers cannot circumvent the application of this fundamental resolution 
of the General Assembly on the issue of Security Council reform. In setting up the IGN process also, the General Assembly further established that its decisions would be taken by, and I quote, the widest possible agreement among member states. In other words, by consensus. The Uniting for Consensus group, which by its very name stands for consensus, is gratified that the rule of consensus has prevailed again today. It is my hope and expectation that the lesson learned today of the need to work by consensus will not be forgotten tomorrow when we resume our work in the IGN at the next General Assembly session. We hope we have seen the last of pressure tactics and maneuvers. The Uniting for Consensus looks forward to adopting by consensus this proposal that has been put forward by the permanent representative of Qatar, and we look forward to advance the work of the IGN next year on the same basis. I thank you, Mr. President. I thank the distinguished representative of Pakistan. Now